I touched on AUKUS at the start of the show and while the submarine deal is set to be formalised on Tuesday in the US, President Biden's tenure beyond next year isn't guaranteed. Would say a President Trump honour these commitments. Lara, his daughter-in-law, joins me now. And Lara, before I get into that, I've got to ask you, I've just seen on your social media that you actually spent today with your father-in-law, Donald Trump, on a golf course with dogs. What happened there? <laughs> I mean, just another day in the Trump family. You never know what you're going to get. Um, I actually was out walking my dogs and I had no idea my father-in-law was here and around and playing golf. And he saw me and he goes, why don't you come around with me for a few holes? And I said, I've got the dogs with me. I have three dogs, Aaron. And he, he said, bring the dogs. I think they're okay. So we brought the dogs. We had a great time. It was super fun. You'd be very game trying to tell Donald Trump that he couldn't do something or anything basically on a golf course. So good luck to it. security he might have tried there. Lara, I wanted to ask you first of all about AUKUS, a big announcement today, which I've already covered in the show. A fair bit of speculation when this deal was first announced as to whether or not your father-in-law would be supportive of it. I know he was very supportive of the way that Australia stood up to China, the former government in particular. Also, though, I know your father-in-law has been quite critical of the money spent on things like NATO and alliances like that. So would he, I guess, respect and uphold this AUKUS deal if he was re-elected as president? Well, obviously, I haven't talked to him about it, and that, that would be his decision. Look, I think we need to show strength on the world stage in a united way, that's for sure. But I do think that, that it, it's a bit concerning to see that um, obviously, some people are worried that perhaps China or Russia or whomever the adversary might be perhaps is getting stronger, perhaps is a problem. I, I mean, it looks every day like we're a step closer to World War III, at least from so many Americans' perspectives, and I, I assume perhaps the same in Australia. How confident does he feel? I, I guess his first hurdle is becoming the Republican candidate. Is he in a, a good state of mind? He's in a great state of mind. Uh, he, he feels very good. You know, he had a great speech last week at CPAC. And, and obviously, if you saw the polling from that, 62% of those attendees want him to become the 47th president of the United States. Um, and I have to tell you, Aaron, everywhere I go, I hear more and more support for him uh, out of just, you know, on the street, in the grocery store, in restaurants. People are very excited. And I think people know that at this point, it is, it's a bit of a dire situation. We have allowed our country to fall into such disrepair under the current administration and the current occupant, Joe Biden, of the White House that I think people realize there's no time to waste. We need to get somebody back in there who's got a plan. Our Prime Minister will meet with Joe Biden and Rishi Sunak, the UK Prime Minister in the US, on Tuesday, our time to make the official announcements regarding AUKUS. Now, we are reliant on bigger countries for our defence. That's just the way it is. Can we have faith in the US at the moment that, given the rise of China and the threat of war in our region and the current war in Europe, that we are going to be protected? Well, I mean, I wish I could say yes, but, you know, we have a president who really has shown his weakness when it comes to China. He hasn't even been willing to ask, uh, you know, anything about the origins of COVID uh, to, you know, President Xi of China. And we know now that this was leaked from a lab in China. We don't know whether or not it was intentional, but certainly we never want to see this happen ever again in the entire world, in, in our history, this was a horrific situation. So it seems like when we have a soft on China leader of the free world, it puts the entire world in a very precarious position. You couple that, Aaron, with the fact that instead of military readiness, our military here in the United States is focused on things like pronouns and making everybody feel comfortable. Um, so it is a bit of a an uncertain time and I believe an unnerving time for people here in America, but certainly for countries like Australia, who, as you just said, rely on us to be the leaders, rely on us to kind of protect the rest of the world. I wish I could confidently say that we have it all under control here, but truly when China is flying balloons across the entirety of the United States without any repercussions, I, I can't say much positive on that front.